Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, September the 18th, 2018. We have all of our commissioners present tonight with the exception of Commissioner Avery, who is out of town. He will not be with us this evening. Let me remind you to uh, come to the podium tonight if you're making presentation and be sure the microphone is turned on so that uh, everybody can hear you and uh, see you uh, on our video recording. I'll also ask you to silence your mobile devices. If you have cell phones, tablets, and other things that uh, make noises, please uh, take a look at those right now. Be sure they are in silent mode. And I'll remind commissioners as well to be sure to activate your microphones tonight uh, when you speak also. We're delighted to have the Reverend Dr. Wayne Johnson from Shiloh AME Church with us tonight. And he's going to lead us in our invocation. That'll be followed by Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, led by Freedom High School Junior ROTC Command Sergeant Major Logan Teaster. So, uh, Pastor, if you'll come, and let's stand for the invocation. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Our gracious and eternal creator, we are grateful for the air that we're breathing because if we were not able to breathe, we would not be able to stand and to give you thanks. For the persons that have been elected to serve this August body, we pray for your wisdom, we pray for your heavenly benediction upon the deliberations that shall be done in this room. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness as a mighty stream. Bless us and help us to make Burke County a wonderful place to live. We're mindful of the persons that I used to serve in Wilmington, that you would be gracious to those persons and persons throughout our state who have lost lives and property, but we also know that you're a great creator who from nothing has made everything. And so we thank you, and we ask that you would bless the deliberations of this evening. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Johnson. ROTC, come and lead us our pledge. Come down, make a picture. All right, this brings us to item number four, approval of agenda tonight. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask that we consider moving the elections item, decision item number one to the consent agenda. Discussions with our clerk uh, indicates that we can do that if there are no objections of such. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, consider moving the elections item to the consent agenda and approving the agenda then as presented. Mr. Chairman, uh, I also wanted to include uh, item three to decision. And it's just because I'll not argue anymore. I argued that point at our pre-agenda. But if 
if we don't do that, I got to vote, vote no on 13 items, and I only want to vote no on the one single item. Okay. All right. With, with that, I make the motion to approve the agenda as um, corrected on two events. All right. Amended Kevin. on two events. You've heard the motion to uh, consider moving the uh, elections item, decision item number one, to the consent agenda and removing consent agenda item number three to decision. All those in favor of that motion signify by the uplifted hand. Those opposed? That motion fails, I believe. You can have a motion. You can't have a vote. Madam Clerk, would you read procedures and policies, page eight on the procedure and policy? Let me pull that up. Okay. Page eight, line 13. Okay, having that motion failed, I'll entertain a motion then to approve. Point of order. Can we go get mine out of the car? I've got it. Which part on page eight would you like for, for me to read, Mr. Uh, Taylor? Pardon? Which section would you like for me to read? Consent agenda item C. Okay. Um, the consent agenda, the board may designate part of an agenda for a regular meeting as the consent agenda. Items may be placed on the consent agenda by persons charged with preparing the draft agenda if they are judged to be non-controversial and routine. Prior to the board's adoption of the meeting agenda, the request of any member to have an item moved from the consent agenda to a decision item must be honored by the board. All items on the consent agenda must be voted on and adopted by a single motion with the minutes reflecting the motion and vote for each item. So if, Ms. if Mr. Taylor wants an item moved from the consent agenda to the decision agenda, he has the right to request that and that would be done without a vote. And then to accomplish the other item, moving decision item one to the consent ad agenda uh, just take someone making a motion to approve the agenda as that is uh, with that change i did that by including the two amendments changes on the board right but the the yeah, agenda is here. is subject yeah. to a vote except you can remove things from the consent agenda to the decision agenda, and it does not take a vote. It takes one member asking that that be done. Correct. And Mr. Taylor has made the request so that the consent item number th three should be moved to the decision agenda. And then a vote taken on approving the agenda with the other change moving item one on the decision agenda to the consent agenda. I got you. All right, gentlemen, uh, at Mr. Uh, Commissioner Taylor's request, I'm going to allow the removal of item number three, uh, consent agenda item number three, resolution opposing House Bill 320 to be moved to a decision item. That being done, I'll entertain a motion now to accept the agenda uh, as uh, presented, moving the decision item number one, the elections item, to consent. So moved, so Mr. Moved. Chairman. All right, thank you. All those in favor, please signify by the official hand. Those opposed. That's four to zero, Madam Clerk. All right. Thank you, Council and Commission. Now, this brings us to item number five, approval of meeting minutes. Gentlemen, you've had minutes from the July 17th Board of Commissioners regular meeting. 
and August 7th, 2018 Board of Commissioner pre-agenda meeting. I'll entertain a motion to accept those as presented. Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed those and they seem to be in order, so I'll make the motion that they be approved as rendered. All right, thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, opposed, no. It's all of us, Madam Clerk. Item 6 tonight, presentation, Sheriff. Uh, first item, recognition of Sergeant William Townsend for the Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate. And we'll recognize Sheriff Steve Wisner tonight. Afternoon, evening, Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity that you give us to present these items to uh, Sheriff's deputies that earned them. And I would like to call Sergeant William Townsend up front to present this to him. I'd like to read from the state of North Carolina Department of Justice, the North Carolina Sheriff's Education and Training, Training Standards Commission. Greetings. By virtue of authority vested in it by the laws of the state and in recognition of attainment of training and educational objectives commensurate with the role of professional law enforcement officer and the personal devotion and service to the people of North Carolina, the Attorney General and the Chairman, the members of the North Carolina Sheriff's Education and Training Standards Commission present William H. Townsend this advanced law enforcement certificate. And if I could take a photo with him and you and the family. Family, come. Okay, this brings us next to uh, presentation item number two, uh, presentation of fixed bus route service. This will be presented by Camille Sterling with the Western Piedmont uh, Regional Transit Authority. Did I get that right? I did. All right. Come on up. Mr. Chairman and members of the county commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening regarding the flex route service that will be beginning October 1st, 2018 in Burke County. I have with me this evening Brian Horton with the Western Piedmont Council of Governments. He will introduce himself and he will begin the presentation. Then I will take over towards the end of the presentation to talk about some of the community response that we've had and also what we've been doing within the community to promote the service. All right, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. As Camille mentioned, I'm Brian Hort with Western Piedmont Council of Governments, Transportation Plan Manager there. Happy to be before you tonight to give a presentation on, as an update on the upcoming new service in Burke County, new transit service. So it really is exciting. It starts, uh, you know, two weeks from yesterday, just uh, Monday, October 1st, but it took a lot of effort. This has been in conversation and discussion now for years. It really uh, took the effort or uh, collaboration of multiple partners, uh, multiple philanthropic groups, funders like the Kate B. Reynolds Foundation, Appalachian Regional Commission, um, of course, uh, the Community Foundation of Burke County, Nancy Taylor was a huge champion of this. Um, lots of uh, local communities, of course, Burke County being a, a continuing partner through, uh, for this project. Um, but why is it important? Uh, ultimately, because this is a lifeline, literally, for, for residents of Burke County. Um, the, in this uh, route area that we're going to launch these four experimental new routes, you actually have 26% of your county 
uh, residents in that area. And it's the communities of, you know, between Morganton and Rutherford College via Valdez and Drexel. Um, we're trying to connect people to education, training, workforce development, to essential medical services, to the doctor, to pharmacies, uh, co uh, connecting a lot of uh, lower affordable, uh, low income and affordable housing areas, and of course the elderly as well, as senior centers, uh, groceries. And so we are fortunate with all that funding to actually have two years for sure secured and actually a huge down payment on year three. Um, we didn't know that when we went into this project, so we're very happy that it's a good problem to have, that uh, we're able to start this project um, with two years for sure and actually probably the third year um, option to renew. Um, so what are we looking to do? With the grant application we, we submitted, um, working with those communities, at the top of this slide, you can see where we started. At the bottom is where we ended up. You can see from the grant application till now, we're not too far off the mark. Where we've changed the routes is largely because of stakeholder involvement, input of the funders, of residents, of ele elected officials, and uh, better serving than uh, some of the communities. So for example, in Morganton now, we actually go up to Vine Arden Road. Um, we also provide uh, service to Canon Pharmacy. Those were comments that you know, stakeholders made during development. And uh, this service, though, is a flex route. It's not entirely a fixed route that just stays on this route and goes to the bus stops. It also has what's called deviation service within three quarters of a mile of the route. And with that, folks can call ahead and actually get a special drop off and pick up within kind of that shaded area you see. Um, so that's why we're able to cover 26% you know, of the county and obviously it's the densest parts of the county. So just walking you through quickly the routes, uh, we worked with the communities along the route to kind of brand these uh, routes, these new services. And in Morganton, playing off of their nature's playground theme and their colors, their city flag colors, and uh, it's a blo blue and green route. Um, the 21 blue and the 22 green will be the routes in Morganton. And then playing off of the mineral springs and kind of uh, mining history, I guess, of the Valdez area corridor, it, we have the gold 23 route and the uh, 24 silver route. And those will run, uh, as you see, from Rutherford College all the way to the uh, Burke County Human Resources Center, um, or DSS. So we've been busy. We were here tonight, of course, at Burke County, Com uh, County Commission. We've been to all the other communities except Rutherford College thus far. Uh, we'll be there the opening day of the service. But we've also been out in the community. We were just at the historic uh, Morganton Festival. We had planned to go to the Burke Recovery Rally, but uh, Florence had other plans for that. But I do think we'll be at the rescheduled event. And this may be then a, a good segue actually to, um, oh, there's some pictures from the Morganton Festival. Um, this might be a good segue for Camille to talk about the service. Thank you very much. We had a lot of opportunity to speak to the residents of Burke County, both off the vehicle, and you can see that we had someone come visit on the vehicle. Thank you very much. And we had the opportunity to showcase the vehicle itself, to showcase the routes, to answer a lot of questions. We had a couple of hundred people stop by the booth to ask questions about employment opportunities, where can they go, who is it for, when is it offered, how much does it cost, and we invite anyone who is interested in receiving this information to visit our website, mygreenway.org. Also, we will be doing social media blasts. The service itself, we want to make sure to get the word out there is for everyone. It's a community service built by the community, and it's been a wonderful opportunity to work with so many community members. We're excited to have the residents and the people that come to visit Burke County to ride the service. We had the stakeholder group or the transportation committee that worked to build the routes, ride the service this morning. And they had a lot of opportunity to learn more about the area. It was like a, a tour on board the bus. And Chip Black had mentioned it would be a great opportunity for even more people to come on board and learn more about Morganton, Valdez, Drexel, Rutherford College, and to find out more about the area that we live in because there's so much history in this area and we've had so much change over time that we want to make sure to tell the stories about the area and to keep the people that are coming in the next generations to know where we live and what we do and to keep people in our area. 
So what we're trying to do also as we move forward with the routes is to offer the first week free in October for anyone to ride. And as Brian had mentioned, this route is for everyone. There are routes 21 and 22 in Morganton and routes 23 and 24 that will not only service Morganton area, but Valdez, Highway 70, Drexel, Rutherford College. And from one hospital to the next, people would be able to park at the Valdez Hospital at outpatient and then ride in if they have to have medical services in the medical park area. We also will offer free rides in October on Friday. And just in general, we will be able to do ticket sales on board and trial tickets. We will be offering the free ride tickets, which are good for a year. And also we do travel training for groups and for individuals who don't know how to ride the bus or maybe I'm not sure how to access the bus at both the fixed route or to call in a deviation by noon the day before. So we wanna make sure how do we get that information out there and in a community like ours, word spreads and people teach other people about what we need to learn. And so the more everyone knows about it, the more if you have a friend or a family member or someone you meet at the store or a constituent or anyone that you might think would benefit from the route or might like to try the route, it is for everyone. Also, children under the age of five are free and caregivers for the disabled and escorts are free as well. 60 cents per ride for those that are age 65 and older and also persons that are considered disabled and also individuals living with a disability just in general. So if somebody doesn't have a Medicare card but is considered disabled, then they would ride for 60 cents. Otherwise, it is $1.25 per ride. And at this time, I'll entertain any questions. One thing I do want to leave you with is one opportunity to learn more about the routes itself is we will have a real-time app that will be available where people will be able to download it and see where the bus is at any given time, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that way people will be able to favor their bus stops, know when the bus is going to come, and they will receive a text message when the vehicle is coming a little bit closer. All right, thank you, Camille and Brian. Gentlemen, any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one. Camille, I asked you a lot of questions at pre-agenda, and I'm not going to be redundant, redundant about it, but one thing I did have a question about, how much variance on your trips as they're designated will the driver have? And the reason for the question, if I'm a senior citizen and I'm going to see my doctor and he happens to be a half mile block, half mile from your regular route, Will he deliver me to that doctor's office? This particular route will flex off of the route itself if scheduled in advance. If someone needs a reasonable accommodation where they, they are unable to access the particular location, we just need to move up a little bit or maybe within a block or so, then that could be the same day service. Otherwise, we recommend for people to call and schedule a deviation off of the route, off of th up to three quarters of a mile in order to be dropped off at that location. Yeah, and I realize he might get himself sometime in trouble. He shouldn't do that, but or he couldn't get turned around. But I, I think a lot of senior citizens would like to know that if, mm -hmm. if uh, it need to be. Thank you. That's Thank all you. I have. Other questions? All right, again, thank you all for being here tonight. We're looking forward to this uh, getting started. We know our folks are uh, also uh, looking forward to this new way of transportation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this brings us to item number seven, scheduled public acceptance. I'm sorry, yes, thank you. I'm going to entertain a motion to accept this report as presented, please. So moved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. It's all of us. Thank you. Now we're ready for public hearings tonight. We have first item comes from Community Development Zoning Map Amendment ZMA 2018-04. And this will be presented by Scott Carpenter, our Deputy County Manager Planning Director. Good evening, Scott. Good evening, gentlemen. Madam Clerk, how are you all this fine evening? Good, sir. I'm glad to be here without the rain, you know. <laughs> so uh, this uh, first item that I bring uh, before you is ZMA 2018. 04 and staff has received a rezoning request from Walter Vinson to rezone a portion 
of one parcel of land that totals 1.76 acres. The request has two parts to it. Mr. Vinson wishes to rezone the front 0.58 acres of the property from its current zoning of industrial to the residential two zoning district. Mr. Vinson also wishes to rezone the remaining 1.18 acres to the general business zoning district. The entire parcel also lies within the I-40 overlay district, which will not be affected by this uh, rezoning request. The reason for the split zoning is because the property has an existing residence on the front uh, portion of the property that is currently non-conforming due to the property being zoned industrial. Secondly, the applicant would like to rezone the rear portion of the property in order to create an overflow lot for his automobile sale business in Valdez. The industrial district does not permit automobile sales businesses. As far as the uh, site goes, the 911 address of the home is 1752 U.S. 70, and it has a Conley Springs address, and the parcel is further identified as pin number 276-229-5307. The parcel fronts on U.S. 70 and is uh, located north of Interstate 40. The parcel is served by public water only. Wastewater disposal is handled by private on-site septic system. The property is located within the WS4 Water Supply Watershed Protection District. Um, the surrounding area has a mixture, can we go to land use, existing land use, has a mixture of uh, home sites, vacant land, and industrial uses located along the US uh, 70 corridor. The property is located directly adjacent to three other parcels, which are zoned industrial as well. There are nine parcels located directly across and down the street from the subject parcel, which are zoned general business. Therefore, this request would be consistent with other light zoning in the uh, area. You can see from the existing uh, land use map that there's a pasture to the uh, right of this property. There's single family homes directly across and there's industrial warehousing to the uh, left across the 70. There's a small business over uh, to the right caddy corner and there's just a whole lot of vacant land uh, from Interstate 40 heading north up into these uh, uh, properties. As far as the uh, existing uh, zoning goes, um, you can see the uh, property here and it's got an industrial zoning classification on it. And you can see all the lands to the right of that are zoned industrial as well. Those were probably done in anticipation of having uh, land zoned for industrial, you know, that's near the Interstate 40 uh, corridor in case a factory or industry wanted to uh, come in. All the lots across the uh, street are zoned uh, commercial as well, even though most of them have uh, residences uh, on them. So, as far as the uh, conformity with the uh, comprehensive plan goes, the uh, current uh, comprehensive plan, land use plan that we use is the 2016 to 2030 Blueprint Burke Strategic Land Use Plan, and that's the most recent one that we have. The future land use map within the plan classifies this area surrounding the subject parcel as a secondary growth area. This area lies just outside of the primary growth area. The secondary growth area has many of the same attributes as the primary growth areas, such as infrastructure, utilities, and transportation corridors. But the secondary growth area may not have all those things in place, but we anticipate in the future that they will expand into the uh, area. Rezoning the parcel to general business would be consistent with the strategic uh, land use plan due to it being located within the secondary growth area within the Interstate 40 overlay district and its frontage on US 70 and other major thoroughfares. As far as conformity with the uh, Burke County zoning ordinance goes, the current zoning district for this parcel is industrial. Like commercial zoning, industrial zoning can be specific to many types of businesses. Environmental factors include noise concerns usually uh, determine a lot of what these fall into. 
a lot of other industrial uses that may occur in this industrial area would be warehousing, manufacturing, and processing plants, as well as the airport. So a lot of different types and different levels of industrial can take place uh, either right next door to this parcel or across. And there's also a lot of uh, things that are allowed in the general business as well. The subject parcel has an existing uh, residential use on it. This existing use is not consistent with the current zoning district, but this request would bring it into uh, compliance with, re with zoning. Rezoning the front portion of the uh, parcel to R2 would be consistent with the surrounding zoning as well. The planning board uh, met on July 26, 2018 to hear this rezoning request. There was no one from the public in attendance to speak. A motion was made to recommend approval of the rezoning request. That motion was seconded and the board voted unanimously 6-0 to recommend approval of the rezoning request. There is no budgetary effect from uh, this running, uh, rezoning request to the county. The county manager's recommendation is approval as well and staff's uh, is the same and the uh, board would be required to adopt a consistency statement as well if you so choose to uh, adopt this zoning change. All right, thanks Scott. Gentlemen, you've heard this information. Before I open the public hearing, do uh, any of you have questions for Scott? Mr. Chairman, I just, we, I left at the uh, pre-agenda, we asked Pete a lot of questions, but I left one question with him, Scott. I don't know if he, got any information, I asked if there would be a problem of safety uh, and traffic when the second school gets built right down there about a half mile from that location. Not as far as I know. We don't have a transportation analysis uh, that would be done to know that. Okay. And this is not large enough to usually warrant a traffic analysis or a study. Thank you. Other questions? All right, hearing none at this time, I'll open the public hearing. Do we have anyone here tonight to speak to this item? Seeing and hearing no one, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion on this item. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance number 20. 18-12 and the consistency statement. The proposed zoning map amendment can be considered consistent with the Burke County 2016-2030 land use plan and the Burke County zoning ordinance is reasonable and in the public interest because this area lies within the secondary growth area. This area has many of the public services and utilities that are available within the primary growth area Therefore, more commercial uses and denser residential developments should be expected in this area. The proposed R2 zoning district to the front portion of the property would bring the existing dwelling into compliance with the zoning ordinance. The table of uses allows many types of commercial uses within the general business district. However, those uses would have a lesser impact on the surrounding residential uses than the potential potential uses allowed under the current industrial district. All right, thank you, man. Gentlemen, you've heard this motion presented by Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, please signify by the uplifting hand. Madam Clerk, four to zero. Thank you, Scott. Thank Item you, number man. two also comes from Community Development Zoning Map Amendment ZMA 2018-05. And this will also be presented by Scott Carpenter tonight. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk. This uh, request uh, comes from Brett Setzer, and he is uh, here tonight, and he is requesting to rezone one par parcel of land, which totals 3.2 acres. Mr. Setzer wishes to rezone the property from its current zoning of residential one to the general business zoning district. The general business district permits various types of businesses which are permitted according to a, a, a table of uses. 
As far as the site goes, the parcel is 3.2 acres and it's mostly wooded aside from a small cleared area fronting US uh, 64. Approximately uh, three quarters of an acre in size is uh, cleared of that lot. The 911 address of the parcel is 2594 US 64 Morganton. Also identified as pin number 179-117-9974. The parcel has approximately 300 feet of frontage along US 64, which is a principal arterial road. The parcel is served by public water only, so wastewater disposal would be handled by a private on-site collection system. <coughs> Excuse me. The surrounding area is a mixture of residential home sites, uh, vacant land, and pasture lands. There are also several businesses, business uses located along US 64. As far as the uh, types of uses that are surrounding the property, to the north it's zoned R1, and there are residences, wooded and vacant land. To the south is zoned R3, general business as well, and there are residences as well as pasture land. To the east is zoned R1, and it has residences. And to the west is general business, which has residences, grading business, and convenience store. As far as the uh, conformity with the uh, comprehensive plan, the current land use plan for Burke County is the 2016-2030 Blueprint Burke Strategic Land Use Plan. The plan classifies this area as rural agricultural area. This designation is given to all areas not designated as primary or secondary growth area. So it falls in what is RMU, which as you know, uh, encompasses most of the uh, uh, county. This was under a different uh, plan uh, many years before and part of that plan had to do with the US uh, 64 corridor. So in 1993 the Burke County Comprehensive Plan probably is a reason why there's uh, quite a bit of uh, general business zoning in that area and on that street even though those have single-family residences occupying the uh, properties. Um, the current plan does not specifically identify the US 64 corridor as the er earlier plan did. However, from a planning perspective, one could assume the highway corridor would still be conducive to commercial uh, development based on the trends in the area. As far as the conformity with the Burke County Zoning Ordinance goes, the current Zoning district for this parcel is R1. The zoning ordinance defines the R1 district as a district composed of single family site built and modular homes in areas that have now or are likely to have both water and sewer availability into the future. The characteristics of the district and the uses allowed there are primarily residential in nature. The general business district provides a commercial zone along major highways that provide for a range of commercial services that are accessible to the general public and surrounding neighborhoods. Businesses in this district are intended to serve daily convenience and personal needs of the immediate area by way of direct access to a thoroughfare road or street. The subject property is located adjacent to six parcels which are zoned general business and one other general business zone parcel is directly across US uh, 64. Five of the seven parcels do have residences uh, on them. And so you can see from the uh, map, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, commercial development already or commercial zoning in the area. Although when you drive down the road itself, it may not uh, jump out at you as you're in a commercial corridor. Um, the planning board met on July 26, 2018 to hear the rezoning request. Again, there was no one present to provide public comment uh, for or against the uh, request. The planning board voted 6-0 to recommend approval of the rezoning request. There is no budgetary effect to, the, to Burke County if you were to approve or uh, deny this request. The county manager's recommendation is for approval. And again, a consistency statement would be required to be adopted by the board if you so 
choose to move forward with this request. All right. Thanks, Scott. Gentlemen, you've heard this information. Any questions for Scott before I open the public hearing? Hearing none, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Do we have anyone here tonight to speak to this matter? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion on this item. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to adopt ordinance number 2018-13 and consistency statement. The proposed zoning map amendment can be considered consistent with the Burke County 2016-2030 land use plan and the Burke County zoning ordinance and is reasonable and in the public interest because this area of the county is defined as rural slash agricultural by the 16 to 2030 strategic land use plan uses of land in this area may not be compatible within more uh, densely population areas such as the primary or secondary planning area the subject parcel is adjacent to other parcels of like zoning the proposed general business zone and district would expand commercial development along US 64, a major road corridor. Any new commercial development would be subject to site development plan review and approval. The site development plan requires requirements are in place to limit the impact to surrounding, res, surrounding residential uses of the area. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Gentlemen, you've heard this uh, recommendation. This motion, uh, all of those in favor, please signify by the uplifting hand. Madam Clerk, that's four to zero. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, gentlemen. This brings us to item number three, tax department. This will be presented a presentation of 2019 schedule of values, present use schedule of value, and public hearing. This will be presented by our tax administrator, Danny Eisenhower. Danny, good to see you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, part of the... Uh, 2019 reevaluation project requires approval of a uh, schedule of values for both the market value and the present use value. On September the 4th, I presented these, uh, these two schedules of values. Uh, during that presentation, uh, we went over the individual parts of the schedule of values uh, for both, both of them. Uh, then, as part of, the, part of this uh, process the clerk advertised that the schedule of values had been presented to the uh, to the commissioners and that we would hold a public hearing on September the 18th which is today uh, following the public hearing the commissioners will be asked to approve both schedules of values on October the 2nd uh, at a special meeting after pre-agenda uh, once approved both schedules will lay open in the assessor's office for public inspection through November the 3rd during this period, citizens can appeal one or both schedules by completing a timely appeal with the Property Tax Commission. Uh, after November 3rd, these schedules will become the Burke County's official schedule of values for the 2019 reappraisal. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Danny. Gentlemen, any questions for Danny before I open the public hearing on this item? Mr. Chairman, if you will allow me one, I've got many, but I promised Danny I would call him and discuss those. But Danny, on page um, 146, I believe, is a statement that's a little bit contradictory. I thought we were doing an evaluation, reevaluation, to evaluate what it's worth, and that statement says that there'll be a 10% increase in agriculture use uh, which is appears to me that it's already de uh, de predetermined and the thing that is questionable there is I don't I don't you know people who have acreage and have for example timber uh, you know how long it takes to grow a white pine timber I don't know personally, but I would say 35 to 40 years. 45 years to 50 years. It's about 15 years longer than a longleaf pine. Oak is about 60 to 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got a, 
you know, you got to know you don't have any income off of that property for that long, long period of time. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, the, the question is uh, why we're pre-announcing that we're going to use the present use schedule going to go up 10%. That was adopted by the uh, Youth Use Advisory Board. I saw that, but that's, yeah. that's still a and, question. And Burke County does not have the experience to create these schedules on our own, so we adopt the schedules that the, that's recommended by the North Carolina Department of Revenue and the Use of Advisory Board. It's probably been a long time since those uh, those schedules have been updated very much, and that's one of the reasons that they announced that 10%. Yeah. Well, even a lot of the horticultural, like Christmas trees, you know, that's a seven to nine year process. You know, yes, they, is. they grow about a foot a year, they tell me, and, and uh, takes about, you know, seven, eight years to get one to where it's marketable. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what that's going to do to those folks. I don't own Christmas trees, so. If but it is a it is a, a question of uh, how how you're going to put the value on that property. Uh, you don't you know you don't get a weekly income from it. You don't even get a monthly. You don't even get a yearly. And some of it is so long uh, drawn out. And you know just just from knowledge of last year working with somebody. Uh, a good, a good value for uh, a price for an acre of timber is around twelve hundred. If you got a real good one, you're fortunate if you get fifteen. So, it takes fifteen, you know, forty years to get fifteen years worth of product out of timber. So most people say, "Well, don't buy the land." Well, I understand that, but it still affects the tax rate of those people. As far as and I'm not here to argue the point one way or the other, but I think if you'll compare the 2013 schedule values to the 2019 schedule values, you'll see very, very little difference there. If you look at a, a forestry uh, is being valued at about $330 an acre if it's good land. You know, and what you got to look at, if that was not in that program, that person may be paying four to five thousand dollars per acre on that, as opposed to three hundred and thirty dollars an acre. So that's the present use value program is doing what it's intended to do. It's keeping the the farm or the uh, or the woodland that's being managed in the hands, keeping it affordable for the general public. I'll be glad to sit down with you and, and go over all those. Thank you. Other questions for Danny? Danny, have you had the folks come ask any questions? Any? No one has showed up at this point in time. Now, we did put it on, I think it's on the county website, and it is also on, on the tax administrator's website also. Right. Okay, thank you, Danny. At this time... Uh, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone here tonight to speak on this matter? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and remind you that the scheduled values will be uh, up for adoption on our October 2nd uh, special meeting following our pre-agenda meeting on that date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. I think I did. I closed the public hearing, didn't I, Madam Clerk? Yes, yes. All right, item number eight, informal public comments. Do we have anybody tonight, Madam Clerk? All right. This brings us to item nine, consent agenda. And I'll ask our county manager, Brian Steen, to review the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, you have 13 items on your consent agenda. Number one, Burke Recovery, National Recovery Month. Number two, Burke County Public Schools construction change order, number 10 and 11. Then the item, uh, Board of Elections poll worker additional funding. Then item four, clerk appointment to JCPC. Item five, clerk appointments, parks and recreations commission. 
Item 6, Clerk, reappointments to WPCOG, Regional Aging Advisory Committee. Uh, number 7 is Community Development, Adoption of the Fontaflora State Trail Master Plan, Lake James to Morganton Section. Item 8, Community Development, Water Mill Road Access Area, Ramp Project Grant Resolution and MOU. Item 9, General Services Resolution in Support of Merger Regionalization Feasibility Grant Application, Dash Drinking Water. Item 10, General Services Resolution in Support of Merger Regionalization Feasibility Grant Application Wastewater. Item 11, General Services Renewal of Annual Cleaning Contract. Item 13, uh, excuse me, item 12, Tax Department, Tax Collection Report for August 2018. And item 13, Tax Department, Release Refund Reports for August 2018. That concludes your consent agenda. All right, thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, you've heard the consent agenda as presented by our county manager. I'll entertain a motion to approve as presented. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Scott. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I believe that's all of us, Madam Clerk. Okay, and this brings us to items for decision. First item tonight we'll cover is the uh, item that was removed from the consent agenda. This will be the uh, Board of Commissioners item. Uh, resolution opposing House Bill 320, an act to expand the types of land that can qualify for present use value taxation as wildlife conservation land. This will be presented tonight by uh, Commissioner Carswell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, the North Carolina General Assembly in session in 2017 ratified House Bill 320, which is uh, entitled an act to expand the types of land that can qualify for present use values or PUV, which expanded the amount allowable as a present use value conservation area for wildlife from a maximum of 100 acres to 800 acres. And according to fiscal notes from 320, the expansion of the land that qualifies for wildlife PUV will result in reduced valuations and tax revenues for county and possibly some municipalities with that local impact not being able to be estimated by the physical research section of the General Assembly. Burke County, as we know, is comprised of 312,210 acres, of which only 220,462 is taxable due to a high level of federal ownership of land via the United States Forestry Service and current PUVs, which relates to a percentage of 70.6% of land in Burke County that is taxable. The North Carolina General Assembly passed this legislation with little to no feedback from the counties. It was pushed through, and they had little feedback, if no feedback, from the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. As chairman of the Tax and Finance Committee of the County uh, Commissioners Association, I was asked, and all 100 counties was asked, to pass a resolution in opposition for uh, 2320 for further discussion and to talk to the General Assembly about raising the maximum of 100 uh, acres currently to 800 acres. There are a number of counties in North Carolina right now that only 20 to 25% to 30% of their <coughs> actual land is available for, for taxation uh, to run their particular counties. And some of those are in the West, including Cherokee and others. That was the reason the County Commissioners Association asked that each 100 counties consider a resolution in opposition to House Bill 320. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, you've heard this information. Any questions uh, on this item? Mr. Chairman, I promise I'd ask no questions. I asked them at pre-agenda. Okay. Thank you. All right, here and then I'll entertain a motion on this side. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, here, yeah. motion from Commissioner Morway to uh, adopt this resolution. All those in favor signify by the uplifted hand. Those opposed? Madam Clerk, that's three to one. Thank you. <coughs> this brings us to item number two, clerk appointments to the planning board. 
This will be presented by our clerk tonight, Ms. Kay Drone. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair Chairman, members of the board. Um, this is a request to make some appointments to our planning board. Rick McClure fills seat number one, which is an east seat. Richard Owensby fills seat number four, which represents the west. And Richard Evey fills seat number six, which also represents the west. Their terms end September 30th. Mr. McClure and Mr. Owensby have served the maximum number of terms allowed. However, Mr. Evie is eligible for reappointment. Uh, seat number seven, which is an alternating seat that alternates from the east to the west every turn, uh, is vacant and uh, we do not have any applications on file at this time for that seat. We have one application <coughs> on file for Mr. William Tunstill. Uh, and for seat number four, there are two applications on file. Um, the term is for three years with a two-term maximum. You have um, one, two, three, you have four motions in your packet. The first one is to appoint Mr. Tunstill to the planning board to fill seat number one for a three-year term ending September 30th, 2021. The second motion is to appoint Crystal Holly or Nick Newton to the planning board to fill seat number four for a three-year term ending September 30th, 2021. The third motion is to reappoint Richard Evie to the Burke County Planning Board for seat number six for a three-year term ending September 30th, 2021. And your last motion is to remove Mr. McClure and Mr. Owensby from the roster and thank them for their service to the community. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, gentlemen, I'm gonna ask that we act on motions one, three, and four all at the same time as there are uh, no contention there. That means uh, we would appoint William Tunstill, Tunstill to the Burke County Planning Board to fill seat number one for a three-year term ending September 30, 2021, and to reappoint Richard Levy to the Burke County Planning Board seat number six for a three-year term ending September 30, 2021 and to remove Rick McClurd and Richard Owensby from the official roster and thank them for their service to the community. Could I entertain a motion to accept that as just Mr. Chairman, I so move. Thank you, Maynard. All those in favor signify by the uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that's four, three, four to zero. All right, now let's go back to the second item to appoint Crystal Holly or Nick Newton to the Burke County Planning Board to fill seat number four for three year term ending September 30, 2021. I'll open the floor for nominations at this time. Mr. Chairman, I might ask does anybody know either one of these? I do not. I know Nick. You know Nick? I do. Okay. Yeah. Not, in, knowing Nick, I move to appoint Nick Newton to the Burke County Planning Board to fill seat number four west for a three-year term ending September 30th, 2021. Thank you, Scott. Any other nominations? Hearing no other nominations, I'll entertain a vote on this item. All those in favor of appointing Nick Newton to the Burke County Planning Board to fill seat number four, signify by the uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that's four to zero. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, item number 11, reports and comments. We'll start down on my far right with our attorney. Uh, no comments from me tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, thank you, J.R. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman, other than my routine and regular appointments, uh, a couple of them got canceled, but y'all should have that information. Uh, I do want to report that September was a very busy month for most of us. Uh, I had 24 meetings. Uh, two of those were canceled, as I said. All but six were county commissioner connected. One of those was with Governor Cooper, uh, roundtable discussion on opiate abuse. Our county manager and uh, Rebecca McLeod was also there at that roundtable discussion. Uh, another thing just for FYI, and I'm doing this because um, one of the meetings I attended, there's a lot of misinformation about school funding. 
And the latest book we got at the convention in Hickory has that information in it. If you haven't looked at it, uh, Burke County's funding per student is uh, uh, twelve. Excuse me, $1,224 a year. Uh, 12 years, that's close to 150000 a year uh, for 12 years. If you uh, add preschool or pre-K to it, it's over 150000 And I think people are shocked when they find out how much money is actually spent in Burke County on that, on that education from uh, grade 1 to 12. I do have an update on, uh, on the Mental Health Board. Uh, the Rutherford County Commissioners have voted to align with Mental Health Partners. It will need to be approved, of course, by Mental Health Partners, and then each county, including us, will also have to approve that for, for it to become reality. But uh, that is some good news uh, that uh, I wanted to share with you. Um, Air Quality Committee meeting was canceled, but uh, I asked Kay to provide you with the evaluation results of that convention and conference and it turned out real really good so hope you'll take a chance to read that and familiarize yourself with it and that's all i have mr chairman thank you madam mr manager yes sir gentlemen i've got some uh, photographs of the jail construction project uh, just a, an array of it it's where we are today They are hoping to do some uh, additional hollow core, hollow core uh, setting later this week or first of next week. So it's moving along. All right. Thank you, Brian. Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's two reports in, in the package, one from the Burke Cooperative Water Board and one from the library. I know you've had time to read those. And uh, again, those reports are, are, are very good especially uh, from the Burke Park Water Board, had a meeting again today, uh, was notified by um, Brentwood that, that they are putting in uh, more taps than they put in in a long, long time. So obviously our building, like we've said before, is going back up. On a personal note, I'd, I'd like to present to the board that I was notified today by uh, North Carolina County Commissioners Association President Larry Phillips that he has appointed me as a co-chair of the 2018-2019 Legislative Goals Committee for the state. All right, thank you, Johnny. Mr. Mulvey? Um, Mr. Chairman, my reports have been uh, presented. They should be in your packet. I just want to make one comment. We just, uh, and it was mentioned earlier, but uh, let's keep those uh, folks in Eastern North Carolina in our thoughts and prayers. I was supposed to be in Kinston, North Carolina with some friends uh, this past weekend and obviously um, they've had some catastrophic fl flooding down there. So let's, like I said, let's just remember those that are suffering. All right. Thanks, Scott. And uh, back to Johnny. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry I overlooked one because it's just happened uh, within the last couple of hours. Our Burke County Top 1 Swift Water Team has been deployed to New Bern. We are, uh, the high, we are the most regarded or highly regarded Swift Water Team. Most of the Swift Water training that occurs in North Carolina occurs here in Burke County. Uh, as we found out last night, uh, we'll be hosting a swift water training for other states in the very near future. So as this team moves down to uh, New Bern, I, I request that we keep them in our thoughts and prayers as they go down there to do some good work in New Bern. All right, thank you, Johnny. Madam Clerk. I don't have any reports, thank you. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. And my reports are in the package as well. I won't go over those again tonight. And I'll echo sentiments from the other members of the board to uh, continue to remember those in the uh, eastern part of our state and some even in the west as well that uh, have suffered the impact from uh, the hurricane. And, uh, of course, myself being in the utility business, a lot of our folks are uh, busy and have uh, gone also to uh, help down east. So uh, let's remember all those folks, whether it's uh, medical, utility, uh, rescue, uh, all of them in harm's way, and then certainly all those who've been impacted by this uh, disaster. So many people have lost uh, everything they've got. So uh, let's remember all these and help, help where we can. 
All right, that brings us to vacancy announcements. Uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. We have the following opportunities for citizens to get involved. The Hickory Regional Planning Commission, the Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, Council on Aging, Aging Regional, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, the City of Morganton for the Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ, the Voluntary Agriculture Board, the Burke County Board of Adjustment and Planning Board, Burke County Parks and Recreation Commission, the Western Piedmont Regional Transit Authority Transportation Advisory Board, Partners Behavioral Health Management, the Animal Advisory Board, the Board of Health, and the Region E Development Corporation. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. And as always, I will uh, encourage you uh, as citizens to make yourself available for any of these uh, boards and committees that you can possibly help with. Uh, we, we need folks to uh, help in these areas and would encourage you to think about uh, doing that as well. Uh, also, uh, we do not have a need for closed session tonight. Uh, you got something, Mr. Carter? One more item, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Before we leave tonight, again, I want to remind everyone that's watching, uh, let's, let's, let's do our uh, good deed in keeping uh, Burke County clean. Uh, uh, again, we want to talk about the litter in, in Burke County. We, we just, uh, we've got too many good things going for us. Uh, I announced again some of those programs that you could, you could uh, uh, do. One of them is uh, swat a litter bug, and I know it works because I got my letter from the DMV this week that uh, my great-granddaughter obliged herself by throwing debris out the back window of the car, and we got turned in. So I know the program works. <laughs> I encourage everyone to... Um, Please uh, uh, take advantage of these adopt the highways and swaddle litter bugs, and let's keep Burke County clean. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Carswell. Again, we have no need for a closed session tonight, though uh, I think uh, we do have some refreshment if uh, you'd like to linger. Uh, something to celebrate, I believe. So uh, please feel free to do that. So with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Maynard. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, I believe that's all of us. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here tonight.